Hey you guys, Brandon here, and I, yep, that's right, I messed with my Glock again. I haven't screwed it up yet, but I've come close on several occasions. Just kidding. No, I've had a lot of fun modifying my Glock over the last few days. I've done quite a few different things to it that I believe are major improvements, and a couple of things that are just minor improvements that I can, you can take it or leave it. But over the last four days, let's, let's see, I've done... Uh, well, let's do a safety check first. All right, make sure there's nothing in the chamber, no magazine, point in a safe direction, click. All right, totally safe. Over the last few days, I've done a number of things, starting with uh, removing a part, some of the, um, the trigger safety bar here that sticks up. It used to stick up, even when you depress it all the way down, it would stick out, and that's what you would feel. You'd feel that digging into your finger as you squeeze the trigger, and I, I don't like that. It's also what like snaps back at you uh, every time you pull the trigger on a Glock when you're shooting it. So I just uh, I smooth that out. It's a smooth face trigger as it is since, since it's a Glock 17. I like that so much better than the groove trigger. A big difference between you know a Glock 19 groove trigger. So I, that was a huge improvement. I really enjoy that. The other thing I did is I polished the heck out of everything. Uh, the trigger assembly, uh, disconnect, um, the, what do you call that plunger? It's the firing pin block plunger. I just used a thousand grit sandpaper and then some mag polish and uh, took my trigger probably from five and a half or six pounds down to four and a half or five pounds. And that's made a big difference. It's also made a big difference in all the creep, you know? you. You, when you get a Glock out of the box, it the trigger goes from here to about here, and that's when you feel it hit that plunger, and then you slide over the top of the plunger till you get to the wall, and then finally click. Right? It doesn't do that as much, not nearly as much anymore. Uh, polishing that plunger down now, it's nice and smooth to the wall, and click reset. Sweet, everything's sweet. I really, I really like. Uh, the result of polishing down that trigger. Next, I kind of experimented with this uh, grip force adapter thing. I didn't like it at first, but I like it now. I'll get back to that. Uh, the way I have it is fantastic, but we'll we'll move on. Uh, we'll move back to that in a minute. Next, I did some beveling, a uh, little bit of custom work to make it fit my hand a bit better, make it function a bit better. Beveled out behind the mag release doesn't do a whole lot. Maybe I didn't bevel enough, but I still have to change the position on my hand to drop the magazine, but that's that's all right. It's not a big deal. Um, certainly not enough to accidentally drop your magazine. So all those people out there that say, don't do that. Oh, extended mag release. They suck. It's dangerous. Whatever. It, it It's not dangerous. Not at all. I'd be hard pressed to accidentally hit that button and drop my, my magazine. Next, I have some rather large hands, so I took out some of the trigger guard big improvement if you have medium large or you know bare paws I, I highly recommend doing that just makes your gun so much more comfortable to shoot uh, you don't have it digging into that knuckle anymore nice and smooth so I, I highly recommend that modification and it's easy to do and then the last one was since I have big hands big fingers um, my finger was grinding on the bottom of that or the inside of that trigger guard so I just took out some of the material and now you know I can still feel the bottom of the trigger guard from time to time depending on my finger placement on the trigger but it's much much more comfortable I don't skip as I'm pulling the trigger or as I'm resetting uh, I eliminated that last thing that I did is I stippled the heck out of it and that's my stippling job I just used so simple I just used a little $20, um, I got it on Amazon, $20 wood burner. And it comes with a bunch of different tips. The tip that I used is just a straight line type of waffle tip. And I, I, um, I turned it, burned it, turned it, burned it. Very simple all the way throughout. Uh, I started off with this tip just kind of pointy and that's how I drew the outline and I think that gave me a foundation to to start the rest of my stippling coolest part about the stippling job is this grip force adapter no I did not cut the grip force adapter short and just stick it on there glue it on there or anything like that no 
it's actually down here. This is part of it, all the way to here, where it originally went. What I did is, before I started stippling it, I took this, which is one of the adapters for the wood burner, and I smoothed it out. And I blended that polymer, the polymer of the grip force adapter, into the polymer of the frame. Just melted all of it, smoothed it all out, melted down all the the original stippling that uh, um, that Glock has on the back strap, and and it became one piece. Now it's all melded into the frame. Grip force adapter is melded into the frame. I don't have to worry about it falling off, which is fantastic. And then I took some sandpaper, sanded it all down, made it nice and smooth, gave myself a good foundation for the stippling, and then I just went to town on it. And I think it came out pretty well. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's relatively aggressive, but it's in the right spots. You know, it's, uh, it's not, I, I didn't stipple up here. You see that sometimes people go high and tight with it, and I, I think that would just be uncomfortable as heck. So I did not stipple the, the top of the grip force adapter. I left that nice and smooth. The other issue with that too is if you're drawing from a holster, you know, and you come down on it, you want to have something smooth there that you can kind of slide into the into your grip and slide up high. Obviously, if I hit this thing down here, I'm going to struggle with that, but it gives me a little bit more of a, of a smooth spot to kind of adjust my grip instead of locking in a bad grip. So I like that. Anyhow, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. It was a lot of fun. These Glocks, you know, they're a blast to just turn into uh, into a personalized firearm so I uh, I hope you guys like what I've done I hope I gave you some ideas and even more than just ideas I hope I encouraged you to go ahead and try something new um, you know just sit down with some tools sit down with your kids and just mess around with it I mean what's the worst that can happen I doubt you're gonna end up m melting the frame in half um, it's it, it it would I'd be hard pressed to mess this up significantly if if anything you know you don't like your stippling job so you go and you buy a twenty dollar set of uh, talon grips and you throw that on over it um, and anyhow it's a lot of fun and I hope you guys uh, learned something here I know I did um, obviously the stippling job a hundred there's hundreds of videos on on how to do that and there's nothing unique about even the pattern that I that I use, I don't think. But um, I think the unique thing about this is you know, melding the grip force adapter in with the frame. I haven't seen that done yet, and I'm really excited about the way it turned out. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, I hope you guys like it as well. Anyhow, thanks for joining me on this journey. It's been a blast. Uh, God bless all of you, and keep shooting.